most people say that Arch Linux is not a beginner distro. And this extends to Arch based distros as well, like Manjaro, Endeavor, Arco, and things like that, with the exception of some very specific cases. And these people are absolutely right. But if someone has a tech background, they have a programming background, they are willing to read documentation, they're willing to learn things along the way, and they know exactly what they're getting into, you can make it work. And I was one of those people. My very first distro that I daily drove was Arch Linux, and I'm still using Arch today. I have talked about how I started using Linux in the past before, but I have a lot of new people here that have probably never heard that story before. So I thought, hey, since there are some people trying out Linux now with the whole recall thing, let's talk about how I got here. Now, one very important thing. I am not encouraging most people to go and use Arch as their very first distro. Most people will try the install process, have no idea what they're doing, and get completely turned away from the system. And this is completely understandable. But if you feel like you want to try Arch, you sort of know what you're getting into, just know that it absolutely can be done. Now, like most people with any sort of tech background, whether that's gaming or programming or engineering or anything else out there, I was aware of Linux and especially aware of Arch Linux long, long before I started using it well into being a kid. And I was aware of some major events that made their way into more mainstream tech news like the Steam machines back in 2014 and just how bad of an idea that was. And then Proton in 2018. Now, the problem with Proton at that time isn't the problem with Proton, it's that I wasn't that into gaming at the time. I was very, very focused on university at the cost of everything else. At the cost of my social life and any sort of entertainment, whether that be gaming, anime, or anything else. I would not recommend focusing as much as I did. And of course, I'd seen movies where Linux was mentioned, and I saw the odd meme about Linux, like how Linux doesn't support your hardware, Linux doesn't work, Arch is hard to install, Gen 2 and source code, and all of these different things that most people in the tech sphere are somewhat aware of. Now, it wasn't until 2019 that I actually started daily driving Arch. Now, you'll notice that this channel massively predates that if you look at the actual start date, but the content on this channel kind of predates it a little bit. I started this channel whilst I was in the process of moving to Linux. Now, at the time, I was doing a software engineering degree, so I had a few chances to interact with Linux in a virtual machine, but I wasn't really using it to do anything besides a specific operation. So I'd use CentOS for something like setting up Hadoop or Ubuntu for doing database things and Git and things like that. Now this is gonna seem like a weird tangent, but it is very important. Prior to me switching, I had an Android development class. The reason why this is important is because of the PhD student who was running the class. They were using Arch Linux. Now, I had never seen Arch with a desktop. I'd never seen Arch as like a fully functional computer operating system. The only way I knew about Arch was the installer, the TTY. I didn't know that you could actually have a graphical environment on Arch Linux. And I can't recall what desktop he had been using, but Thinking back, it was probably some form of window manager, maybe i3, maybe awesome WM. It definitely wasn't something like GNOME though. One thing I do absolutely remember though, and I don't remember the context behind this whatsoever, he did run GLX Gears. For some reason, that's just sticking in my head. I'm sure there was something important about that though. But from here, I decided to go and look into what this whole Linux thing was because my entire perception of what Arch Linux could be and just Linux in general had been completely turned on its head because yes, I had used CentOS and yes, I had used Ubuntu in a virtual machine, but I didn't know about this thing called a desktop environment or a window manager. I thought that what you got is what you got and 
I didn't really like what Ubuntu had or what CentOS had, that being GNOME. I eventually found my way, obviously, to Linux YouTube, but I wasn't necessarily set on using Linux or using Arch. I just wanted to know more about what was going on. So I started watching videos from people like Infinitely Galactic, DistroTube, The Linux Experiment, Chris Titus Tech. At that time, a lot of distro review videos and things like that, just to get my head around what was actually out there. And I realized that Linux just wasn't what was shown in movies, and it wasn't just what I saw from this one class. There was so much more out there, and I was getting very interested to see what else could be done. But what really set my Linux path in motion, using Arch Linux, using window managers, using a terminal file manager and things like that, is when I found Luke Smith's channel. Back then, he was actually making videos and making videos about Linux, and I learned a lot about these weird things called a window manager. I believe he was using i3 at the time. I learned a lot about shells, terminal-based applications like Ranger, and generally just how to interact with Linux. And for context, I had not swapped to Linux yet. I was a Windows user that was sitting there watching hours upon hours hours of Linux content every single day. Now, I am the kind of person who doesn't like to make a choice on anything unless I know a lot about that choice. Even if that choice is completely free, I am going to spend a lot of time working it out. And then when there might be time and money involved in actually making the swap, I spend even more time. For example, if I wanted to buy a monitor, I would probably spend a couple of days researching them, even though they're all pretty much the same. But before properly doing the swap, I started making use of a lot more open source software under Windows. Usually it was applications that I knew were going to be available on Linux as well. I probably did that for maybe a month or so before finally making the swap to Arch. Now, Luke was also a very big inspiration for me starting this channel, specifically because I felt like I could make better videos. Now, if you go back and watch those early Linux videos, they were not good. And it took a very long time for me to actually feel like, hey, I think these are probably better videos. Some people might disagree. And now I sort of have my own style, but if you go back to those early videos, they were very clearly inspired by someone. Speaking of bad videos, I actually made a video on when I tried to install Arch and then completely balked my system doing so. So, um, yeah, that's not a good video, but it certainly is one that does exist. Now, that could have been the end of the story, but there is a little bit more. The problem is when I switched to Linux. Now, most normal people will say, hmm, I have classes right now. Maybe changing my operating system isn't a good idea and would do so during their next break. I swapped in maybe the second or third week of classes that semester. And at the time, my only computer was this laptop right here. The laptop doesn't work anymore, but I still have it because I haven't thrown it out. I didn't buy it with the intention of using Linux on it. I didn't check if everything was going to work fine before installing Linux. I just kind of did it. And luckily, it was fine. For the most part, the, uh, the fingerprint reader doesn't work, but doesn't really matter. Now, <laughs> I did do the correct thing of installing a second drive and trying to install Linux on it. But do you know why I always tell people, unplug your drives when you're installing a new operating system? And don't bother trying to set up Grub. Just if you want to swap the operating systems, do so in the BIOS. It's just a lot easier. I say this because of my experience installing Linux. The plan was to have my Windows install and use that for class, and then the Arch Linux install and use that to mess around with Linux. 
that didn't happen. Now, luckily, I made the correct choice of backing up all of my data. Because what happened, and it's probably a mistake with using FDisk and overwriting the incorrect disk, but um, during that Arch process, I got Arch installed perfectly fine. And then I tried to swap back over to Windows, and I noticed I couldn't swap over. I unplugged the drive that had Linux on it, and I couldn't boot the system. So I somehow wiped out my Windows install. Now at this point, I could have just said, and really should have just said, this experiment went really, really badly. Let's just go back to Windows where I know everything is going to be fine, and just do this whole Linux thing later. But I said, hey, I've already got Arch installed, I've got i3 set up, I'm ready to go. Let's kind of just wing it and see what happens. That semester was a little bit weird in trying to get things to work because I had to go and learn how LibreOffice works to write some reports. I had to suddenly find some replacement software for a lot of things I was using. I had to learn how to set up a virtual machine under Linux to do things where I couldn't replace. And it was annoying, but I eventually made my way through. Luckily, that semester wasn't that intensive. So I started my journey on i3, I learned how a manual tiling window manager worked, and I liked it at the time, but when Luke swapped to BSPWM, I tried that, and man, dynamic tiling is so much better than manual tiling. And because the videos I made on BSPWM at the time, I got a shout out from Luke, and that's what initially like boosted up the channel, and sort of what got things initially growing. A bit later down the line, I swapped to Awesome WM, then I tried out Sway for a bit, then I swapped to Hyperland. Nowadays, I'm trying out KDE, and in the very short future, I'll probably be trying out Cosmic as well. While most things were relatively smooth sailing, it's not like everything was. Sometimes my lecturers would say, we need to use this very specific application, and oftentimes it just didn't run under Linux, and a native application could be used as an alternative, but sometimes that just wasn't viable. I also had to ensure that documents I submitted actually looked correct. Very quickly, I stopped submitting the actual document file and started submitting PDF files because that was just easier to ensure everything was correct. Now, I did have one lecturer who was really weird and just didn't want people submitting PDF files. He was like, well, um, PDF files are harder to mark, which didn't make any sense as a statement. So I wasn't the only one submitting PDFs. So half the class just sent his boss an email being like, your teacher's a moron and won't let us submit our work as a very standard file type. And he very quickly changed his tune. And of course, I ran into the standard Arch Linux issues like, hey, your mirrors are dead. Hey, your keys are out of date. Hey, have some manual intervention. Good luck, work it out. And those were very giant learning experiences for me, especially when they happened at times where I really wanted things to be working because I had some classwork to get done. And it wasn't just a matter of reading documentation. I also had to learn how to use a search engine. That might sound really weird, but everybody knows that they can type things into a search engine, but learning how to frame what you're asking in a way that will get you information that actually gives you the answer, that is a much harder thing to do. And that didn't just help me with Linux, it helped me with my study, and of course, it helped me with this channel. A lot of the things that I've talked about on this channel wouldn't have been possible if I didn't go through that initial experience where I had to force myself to just learn how to find information and learn how to process information in a way that I can actually apply it to my situation because sometimes you would find an answer that wouldn't necessarily completely apply to what you're doing but still does address it and you need to know that that actually is relevant and not something entirely different. 
Now, all of this is to say, if you are new to Linux, probably don't do what I did. Don't swap in the middle of class. Very bad idea. If you're going to do that, swap during a break. Even if you're using something like Ubuntu or PopOS, there's going to be some issues that you absolutely run into. And if you do want to try Arch, you absolutely can. Just keep in mind that if you don't have that background, there is going to be a lot of things to learn. And if you want to make the swap, I would recommend doing some of that learning before you delete your other operating system. But let me know your experience. Have you tried out Arch Linux? Was Arch Linux your very first distro? Or maybe you even tried out something like Gentoo. But even if it's something like Ubuntu, PopOS, Manjaro, anything else like that, let me know your experience in the comment section down below. So if you liked the video and you learned something, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Silly, Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Please don't copy exactly what I did. This is not a tutorial.